Well, after I do a CD and we and um, you know when it's all finished, mixed and mastered, and it's that we start working on the business end, trying to put tours together and that. Then whenever I hear a cool title on, on the television, on the news, in the newspaper, or somebody will say something, I'll run and just write it in a book, just a piece of paper. And by the time I do the next Annihilator CD, uh, a year and a half later, I have maybe 50 or 100 titles. And out of the titles, you can get ideas for songs. Um, but that's it. That's all I do for the, <clears throat> for the, music, or for the uh, lyrics or no melodies or anything like that. With music, it's different because that's what I usually do first is just take a drum machine, just have a good beat going. You know, like I'll, I'll go on the tour bus and I'll have this cool little uh, TC Electronics setup um, into my laptop where I, I've just got uh, my Cubase 5 uh, drum plug-in and I just sit there in the back of the bus sometimes writing riffs. Not much. On tour, it's, it's not much fun to sit in the back of the bus. There's a lot of fun things to do on tour, believe me. Sometimes I'll write riffs in the back of the tour bus or something or in the dressing room. Not a lot, but... Um, when I go back to do a record, I've got, you know, maybe 100 or 150 riffs that I've done over the last year and a half with a drum beat and a simple drum beat and then a riff. And then I go through the 150 riffs and I go, that sucks, that sucks, that's terrible, that's awful, that's really good. And I put that in the good pile. Um, and then I go through there. Every 10 riffs, there's one really good one. And at the end of this, I've got, you know, I don't know, 20 really good riffs. And uh, then I put them into categories. I say, well, that riff sounds like a chorus. I, I decide very quickly, that's a chorus. This is an intro. This is a solo riff. That's a verse. Um, and now I have the basis for four or five songs. So yeah, the, the last CD I did was more than two years ago. Um, it'll be three years between my last CD and the new one. So that's different for me this time because I have hundreds and hundreds of riffs and that's, I'm looking forward to doing the next record now. But uh, usually there's like 20 or 30 really good riffs and I, I can write 10 songs around those riffs. In the older days when I spent more time uh, playing guitar and less time out in the world, you know, uh, then some of these time changes and technical changes were, were thought out. I would think them and I would uh, try to make something cool. What I've been doing for maybe the last 10 years is I would just write different riffs and I'll put them together like a, like a puzzle. And if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. I put it over there and it can sit there. And I bring another one in and sometimes people will think that, wow, he's being very creative and that must have taken a lot of thought and thinking. Uh, but it isn't. It's just two different riffs, put them together and somehow they, they work. So that's a fun way with computers at least now where you can just take all these riffs if they're in the same tempo and just put them together and see if they work. If they don't work, you, do, you just try another one. So that's always fun. That's a fun part. I usually program the drums to a simple beat, mostly double bass, just to keep it simple and tight. Do the riffs and then um, because I've had my own studio for a long time, what I will do is in the studio when I'm writing the riffs, um, I'm already plugged in through the amplifier, through the equipment, so the sound I'm hearing is my sound for the record. So if I have a good riff and I play it very well and I'm in tune, um, I can keep it. When you, when you play guitar to a grid, to a click, to a tempo, uh, and you do ten riffs, you can put them all together and you can move them around and do whatever you want. You can try them in different places. Um, so some albums I will just do that. I will take a good played riff and put it here and put another one there. And other times what I'll do is I will put them together and then start right from the beginning and play it, actually play it. It depends on what kind of song it is. If I want some feel, real feel, I'll try to play it all the way through. I can never do that. Um, or if I, if I want perfection, I want it perfectly tight, then I'll just keep the pieces and put the perfect pieces together like that. Then later you can, ch um, then I'll put the bass guitar on. So now I'm, I'm playing guitar riffs, bass guitar, to a perfect drummer, the perfect drum machine. And after the, the uh, songs are together, when the riffs and the bass are done, then the drummer comes in and plays along after. So I take the drum machine away, and I have the click that goes tick, 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 so the drummer can hear the time, and he plays along with the finished guitar and bass tracks. This is cool for me because it, uh, it makes it like a machine, makes it perfect. Now, that's also a bad thing 
because you don't have the feel. But I don't care. That's fine. I don't. Doesn't matter. I like more the robot, uh, robot picking and perfect timing and things like that. Um, but then the last thing that comes on is the solos and the vocals. But uh, it's really cool doing the drums after because if there's any mistake or anything sounds wrong, it's the drummer's fault because the guitars and bass are perfect. So, yeah. But it, it's a strange way of doing it, but it's, you, you just get into doing it that way. And I record a lot of things by myself, so it's, it's different than playing with a band. Band, of course, you want more of a band feel. I had a, a little Sanyo, uh, we called it a ghetto blaster back then. It was just a little tape recorder with a cassette. And we go buy a cassette tape for, for $5. It was just crazy prices. And I'd put the cassette in, and I'd write a riff on guitar, and then I'd pause, and then I'd think of another riff, and I'd record the other riff. And I would have a little cassette tape with 20 minutes of riffs on it. And uh, it was more difficult, of course, because we didn't have computers to organize it, but then I would uh, take it, and I have an, my sister had another tape recorder, so I would play it to the other one, the other machine's microphone, and put the order of the, the riffs that I liked. And uh, it was a very terrible way to do it, but it was, you had to spend a lot of time. A lot of guitar players and bands will tune down their guitar, in metal at least, will tune down their guitars very low so that it sounds cool and heavy and tough. But the riff isn't very good. But it sounds good because it's tuned low. Whereas I, most of my stuff, I, I, I keep the tuning at 440, keep it up to normal tuning. Um, and if the riff sounds good in normal tuning, then it's a good riff. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of the riffs that I play, if I tuned it very low, it would sound much more heavy. Mm -hmm.